Welcome to How to Buy Out a Sibling After Mom and Dad Pass Away and Preserve Prop 13. My name is Jim Cunningham. I'm going to be walking you through the steps on how to preserve Prop 13 for the children when the parents pass away. If you're watching this video, uh, you know that um, you know that this can be lost. So whenever the parents die and the children inherit property, the children have to do something in the right way uh, within certain time parameters in order to preserve the Prop 13 that passes, at least currently, before February 16th of 2021, the Prop 13 that passes to the children. Uh, I'm a lawyer. This is information. This is not legal advice. This video does not constitute an attorney-client relationship. Do not watch this video and go out and do a bunch of stuff. It's a really bad idea. Um, I'm an attorney. I own Cunningham Legal. I have 25 years experience. We have uh, region, uh, offices in the Sacramento region, Bay Area, uh, Northern California, Bay Area, and SoCal as well. I'm a certified specialist in estate planning, trust, and probate law. That means I've taken an additional bar exam and uh, I've been reviewed by my peers. I'm also a real estate broker and securities licensed. I'm also insurance licensed. So I have a, a broad depth of experience and the Prop 13 is the intersection. Uh, when you inherit um, assets uh, from a parent, uh, Prop 13 is an intersection of trust law and real estate law um, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So. Uh, these are the lawyers in our firm. There's me, there's Tasha, there's Connor, Rochelle, Liz, Jeff, and Janice. Okay, Prop 13. We got to understand this is an important property right that every taxpayer in California has. Even if you bought your property two years ago, you're under Prop 13. If you bought your property in 1975, you're under Prop 13. Everyone benefits from Prop 13. As a general rule, the longer you hold property, the greater benefit you have because the tax the, the amount that you're taxed on the property, uh, it does not necessarily correlate with its current market value. And I'll walk you through that. So Prop 13 taxes, at least currently until February 16 of 2021, can be inherited by children. This is very important. A lot of people don't know that. Um, but there were changes to Prop 13 that were passed in 2020 that we're going to cover. And Prop 19 effectively eliminates the children's ability to inherit the parents' Prop 13 tax base. So we are here because as a taxpayer, you want to pay the least taxes possible, uh, including property tax and not a penny more. That's most of my clients. We're here to help you craft a plan, give you options, make recommendations that may reduce your overall tax bill, leading to more wealth for your family and loved ones. I mean, who wouldn't want that, right? Understanding the property tax issues involved when buying out a sibling requires a, a, an understanding of Prop 13 and an understanding of Prop 58. So we're going to talk about Prop 13. This, this is 1978. What happened in, in the 1970s, there was massive inflation. Housing prices went way up. They kept going up. And at the time Prop 13 was passed, the average tax rate for a, a homeowner or property owner was about 2.7%, 2.67%. And that is a big tax burden. So the voters uh, rebelled. They said, you know what, forget this. Uh, we're, gonna, we're going to bring in a new tax structure that drops our taxes down. This was approved in 1978. It rolled back values to their 1975 assessments and capped the amount that the uh, county could tax at 1% at, uh, of the market value in 1975. Or when the property trades, Whatever the assessor says the market value is, the taxes are 1%. There are some ad, ads in there, some local county ads, you know, uh, school district, uh, community college district. You'll see those on your property tax bill. But for our purposes, 1% is kind of the number that we're operating under. Um, so mom and dad buy a home in Cupertino in the 1970s. And for those of you who don't know where Cupertino is, it's where Apple is headquartered. Cupertino has seen some of the biggest price appreciation in the entire state of California. So I love this example. The property has gone up from $50,000 to $2 million. This is actually a property that's listed uh, as of December uh, 2020 on the multiple listing service. It is listed at $2 million. And the taxes are $1,500 a year. Now the taxes on the next door neighbor who just bought their property are $1,500 a month, maybe more, right? That's Prop 13. So one neighbor might pay 10 times what the next door neighbor pays or more. Uh, 
So as I mentioned, the current property tax structure, property is assessed at 1% of its market value plus some additional county sweeteners in our example. So it's a little bit more than 1%. Um, and the cha a, a change in ownership, um, what that means, when, it, when a property, when there is a change in ownership, obviously it's a sale. I buy, I sell the property to you. That's, that's a change in ownership. A gift is a change in ownership and a death. And this is where a lot of people um, kind of get surprised. Death is a change in ownership because the board of equalization that manages all the assessor's office, they disregard trusts for the purpose of determining who owns the property. They do not look at who the trustee is. They look at who the beneficiary is. Now these prop 13 taxes are capped at a 2% annual increase, but what's happened? So your 1% tax market value, your taxes can only go up 2%, but property in California has gone up four, six, 8%, even more in some areas. And so what happens is for many people, the fair market value of their property, as in our Cupertino example, is 2 million, but they are taxed as if the thing is worth 120,000. So long-term owners of California real estate, the longer you hold real estate as a general rule, the more beneficial Prop 13 becomes for you and everyone is protected by Prop 13. So we have a, uh, some, there is a Q and A, uh, if you're watching this recorded, obviously we're not, answer, we're not gonna answer questions, but we do have a, a question from Anonymous. Is an irrevocable trust accepted by assessor's office in San Francisco as a transfer immediately for preserving Prop 13 or is it recognized as a transfer at the death of the parent? Uh, it depends. Uh, if a change in ownership has occurred and you look at California Revenue and Taxation Code Section 60, there's a three-prong test. If you meet all of those three prongs, that constitutes a change in ownership. Many trusts have a lot of strings attached to them that kind of blow that up. So without looking at the trust, I could not give you a definitive answer, but it, if, if, if it is a completed gift and meets that three-prong test, uh, then the San Francisco assessor, like every other assessor in California, looks through the trust. So in the 1980s, um, before 1986, if a parent died, the property was reassessed, right? There was no parent to child reassessment exclusion. So 1986 rolls around, uh, you know, what is that? Eight years after 1978, uh, after Prop 13 was passed. And let, this lets the children keep the parents Prop 13 taxes when a change in ownership occurs. And, and then the kids, when the kids die, the kids can leave that property to their kids. And we do have families where a, a, uh, a grandparent was under Prop 13, left the property to the kids, and then the kids died. So the grandkids get this Prop 13 tax base. So that is putting together Prop 13 and Prop 58. And again, a change in ownership includes death, sale, gift. Um, and then privately in the chat asks, if I buy out my two sisters using my, if I buy out my two sisters using buy assets, I think my assets from the trust, do I still get my parents lower tax base? We're gonna cover that. So the parent can give the property thir Prop 13 tax base to the child uh, until <laughs> February 16, 2021. So property is reassessed when there's a change in ownership. Classic example, the parent gives the property to the child. We'll cover why that may not be a good strategy. In some cases, it might be a good strategy, uh, but um, the home of any value. So you could have a beachfront Malibu property that maybe has a $500,000 tax base and is worth $10 million. Those are out there, right? The property was purchased for $400,000 in the 70s, which was a lot of money back then. And now uh, the assessed value is very low and that Prop 13 tax base can transfer to the child. Same with the Tahoe property. We have a lot of clients with lakefront Tahoe properties that they are legacy properties. They're able to transfer under current law those, if those are their residences, a tax base of any value. If the tax, if it is not a residence and you know it's your residence, if you claim your homeowner's exemption, you find you, you to determine if you know, if you've claimed your homeowner's exemption, look at your tax bill. It's that $7,000 deduction from the assessed value of your property. So in addition to the home, each individual parent can leave a million dollars in assessed value to their children. We do have clients that have a 10 or $20 million portfolio properties with a million dollar assessed value. They're meeting with us and I'll, I'll walk you through how to do that. They're meeting with us right now to figure out a way, hey, how can I get these properties to my kids and, and preserve Prop 13? Because February 16 of 2021, when the parent dies, all those properties get reassessed. So 
Mom and dad died before February 16, 2021. This is current law as of December 2020 when we're doing this webinar. Prop 58 lets the kids keep parents' Prop 13 taxes. The taxes stay at 1500 and they don't go up to 24000 That's the 1% plus the, uh, the added sweeteners um, in, in Santa Clara County. So the kids do not have to live in the home. That's a really big deal, okay? The kids don't have to live in the home. And I want you to remember that because later the, it's gonna change, right? On February 16th, those rules start changing. But what if only one kid wants the house? And let's say there are three kids, mom and dad have three kids and one kid, and this is kind of why, it, it, why most of you are here. If one kid wants to buy out the other two kids, there's a two thirds reassessment, right? What I mean is if the property is distributed to the kids and then Andy, Betty and Charlie, and Andy wants to buy out Betty and Charlie, then if the property's already been distributed, the property will get a two thirds reassessment. So all of this has to happen before the property is distributed, okay? This is after mom and dad die, but before the property is distributed. And so I meet with a lot of people who say, Jim, I talked to my accountant, mom and dad died, this is really easy. All we need to do is, is do an affidavit of death and distribute the property and then that's fine. Well, the problem is you've just eliminated the ability to preserve Prop 13 taxes when you want to buy out a sibling. So I will tell you, if, so if your parents have passed away or they're, they're not doing so well and you're kind of thinking about this or you are the parents and you want to preserve Prop 13, you really do need an expert lawyer involved in the process. There are not many expert lawyers in this field uh, because it's a confluence of, of property tax law and estate planning. So this is a subspecialty uh, of a subspecialty. And we do have a Q&A after April 15, 2021, if the parents die and there are two kids and one kid buys out the other and stays in the home, would there be a reassessment? Uh, maybe it depends, Anil, I'll answer that as we go through the materials. So again, savvy attorneys know how the siblings can buy out the other siblings, right? And I put that in air quotes because uh, you're not really buying out, you're doing something slightly uh, differently where there's no reassessment. So three kids, Andy wants to buy out Betty and Charlie. Andy can end up with the property and there's no reassessment. So how do you buy out a sibling without triggering a change in ownership? Because those two examples seem really similar. The example where the property's distributed and Andy buys out Betty and Charlie versus the properties in the trust and the deck is shuffled a little bit and Andy ends up with the property. Those have two very different um, uh, legal analyses uh, under the Board of Equalization. And the Board of Equalization, again, is, is the organization that, um, that supervises the assessor's office. Mike asks, if you gift now, you lose your step up, why not add the child to preserve step up and then half reassessment? Well, I'll answer that. There's a, there's a solution that we're working on. So here's how you do it. Mom and dad, let's make, I'm going to give you the easy example. Mom and dad have $6 million in assets. Mom and dad create a living trust, and this is very important, and I'll explain what this is in the next slide. Mom and dad create a living trust with non pro rata distribution powers. Now, I will tell you, most trusts that are, are, are properly drafted have this, but I have seen trusts that do not have this provision. So um, a lot of people say, why are you writing that trust that's 70 pages long? Well, it's 70 pages long because we have non pro rata distribution provisions in there okay, well, I want, so I'm going to take my three page trust and I'll add those provisions. And then there, you know, there's another webinar where we talk about a lot of other stuff. So that's why these documents end up so long because you need to load them up with all these goodies that really, frankly, don't benefit the parents, but they do benefit the kids. So when you look at a trust and you go, wow, this one's five pages and this one's a hundred pages. Am I paying for law by the pound? Many times that much uh, longer trust has superior functionality uh, if you need it, right? So mom and dad die and they have their three children, Andy, Betty, and Charlie. So mom and dad's estate is 6 million. And what they do during the trust administration is the trustee, the trustee has the ability to divide up the, the house a third, a third, a third. The trustee also has the ability to give the house to Andy because it's a non pro rata distribution. And just remember that term because it's a non pro rata distribution, Andy can take the property and Betty and Charlie get the $2 million each $6 million Andy is not reassessed on the property. Andy has to file a Prop 58 form. And that's a form that lawyers download from the assessor's office in each county and they complete for their client. It does require um, 
disclosing your social security number to the board of equal to the assessor that then is sent to the board of equalization and they keep a master index of all the parent to child reassessment exclusions they are paying attention so it's very important uh, to note so this is the simplest situation we see this a lot where one child takes the property the other kids take the cash you do need a non pro rata distribution a pro rata distribution of the assets of a trust means that andy betty and charlie each receive an equal portion of each asset in the trust most trusts most well-written trusts have non pro rata distribution and that means andy betty and charlie receive an equal proportion of the entire trust but not necessarily each asset and that was the example of the two million dollar property going to andy the two million dollars in other assets going to betty and the two million dollars in other assets going to charlie but what if there aren't enough assets in the estate to make non pro rata distributions all right let's take the <laughs> houston we have a problem okay this is a problem and this is a problem where a lot of uh, estate planning lawyers who handle trust administration, and they haven't done this before, they actually seek out other expert lawyers. And uh, you know, our firm would be one of those, but there, there are other firms out there as well. And they seek out the help of an expert lawyer because they don't want to screw this up. And the problem is, if you do mess it up, your, your taxes jump quite a bit. And so here's what we do. If mom and dad have 2 million in assets, Mom and dad have created a living trust with non pro rata distribution powers. You got to have non pro rata distribution powers. Mom and dad die, leaving the three children, Andy, Betty, and Charlie. Mom and dad's estate is only the home. All mom has is this house. It's paid off. They spent their last nickel um, and they're in the home. And mom and dad die and they have no other assets. All they have is the home. And Andy wants the home. Andy wants to move into the home or Andy wants to rent the home. I don't know what that home would rent for thousands and thousands of dollars a month, right? It's just around the corner from Apple, their, their headquarters. Andy wants the Cupertino home and he wants to buy out Betty and Charlie. So how does Andy do this? So this is um, a, a, <laughs> a specialty area. This is actually, if you do not have the right lender, it's almost impossible to do. Very few lenders will lend to a trust, but here's what happens. Mom and dad's trust, not Andy, Mom and dad's trust borrows 1.33 million. I rounded up 1.35 million. So they borrow 1.33 million and Andy is distributed the home, the $2 million home with a mortgage of 1.33 million. So he's getting a net value of 667,000. The cash that's left over, because remember the trust borrowed money from a lender and now the trust has 1.3 million in cash. The trust distributes the property with the, um, note secured by deed of trust on the property. And then Betty and Charlie each get cashed out for 667,000. There is no reassessment of the property provided Andy files his Prop 58 form, his claim for reassessment exclusion. That's how you buy out a sibling in a trust. Very few lenders will, um, will permit this. These are very expensive loans. They're short-term loans. Um, but the value is there because if the property is reassessed, um, his property taxes stay fifteen hundred a year. They don't go up to twenty four thousand a year. That's a lot of money. Twenty two thousand, you know, twenty. What is that? Twenty two thousand five hundred dollars. That's a lot of money. We do have the salt limitations now, where the state and local tax you can't deduct those on your federal return if it's over, um, if it's over uh, ten thousand dollars. So this. Prop 13, super important property, right? This is kind of an extreme example, but it is not uncommon, quite frankly. These are the properties that people tend to want to, to hold on to. So mission accomplished. We've done what we need to do. Uh, Michael asks, does the bridge hard money loan have to come from a financial institution lender or can the funds be obtained from any source? A friend, you know, um, they, the, the whole point is the trust has to borrow it. Andy can't pay money to his siblings, okay, and take the property. It doesn't work that way. It's all got to funnel through the trust. So if Andy has, another alternative would be Andy could, um, well, the money has to come from somewhere. It goes into the trust. There are a lot of variations on that, but on a high level, that's what needs to happen. So mission accomplished. But February 16, 2021, the whole universe changes, right? The whole world changes because of Prop 19. And so here's what just happened. Prop 15 did not pass. Prop 15 got 49% of the vote and uh, 50, 49% yes, 51% no, very close. Prop 19 passed 51-49, go figure, right? So 
Mom and dad die after February 16, die February 16, 2021 or later. Uh, Carrie asks, if all the siblings are fine with it, can't they just agree that one kid gets the property? I don't care about the money. Um, maybe. Um, it just depends on how the trust is written. Trusts have, an ant have a spendthrift provision, an anti-assignment clause. So it, it is tricky. That, and there are a lot of, I'm just giving you on a very high level, this is what happens. Um, but uh, uh, that's something where I would, I would talk to us. If, if this is something that you're concerned about, go ahead and reach out to us. If my parents did not have a non pro rata, if my parents did not have a non pro rata distribution in the trust, can we still do non pro rata distribution? No. Right. So you, you need that in there. Um, so what just happened? Prop 19 passed mom and dad. So if mom and dad die February 16, 2020 or 2021 or later, trust has non pro rata distribution uh, powers. Andy, this is very important. The parents have to claim this as their homeowners. All right. They have to be living in the home, have their homeowners exemption on there. If they're not living in the home and they're renting it out and they claim the homeowners exemption, that's called tax fraud. Not a good idea. Andy must also claim the homeowner's exemption in within one year, okay? And here's what Andy gets. Andy gets, remember that million dollar parent to child reassessment exclusion on other property? Andy gets the tax base plus another million dollars in value, which is not reassessed. That brings him to $1.12 million. The remaining $880,000 is reassessed. And this is if Andy, if Andy buys out his siblings, right? So Prop 19, not so good for kids, really good for mom and dad, and we'll talk about that. Not so good for kids. This is gonna add about $11,000 uh, per year to Andy's tax bill. The taxes go from 1,500 to 12,500. Still not so bad on a, on a, on a $2 million property, uh, but still they're significantly higher than they would have been uh, before Prop uh, 19. And frankly, this is with uh, great planning. We're going to know more after the new year. The legislature convenes in January. We'll have some enabling legislation passed. Um, now, this is important, this million-dollar exemption. The current million-dollar exemption, the one where you can leave other property of a million or greater, is not indexed to inflation. This one, <laughs> this one is indexed to the FHA, the uh, Federal Housing Authority, House Price Index for California. So here's what's going on. The $120,000 tax base is tied to the California Consumer Price Index, but it can only go up a minimum, a maximum of 2% a year. And that's good, right? This million dollar exemption goes up according to the house price index for all of California, not a specific region. And er some areas in California go up faster than others. But here's what you need to understand. If there is a gap right now, that gap will only get wider because the house price index for California goes up higher than 2% every year. Right, And so what's going to happen is if in this situation, if the house is worth $3 million in 10 years, then the, um, that difference, even, if, even when that million dollar exemption is growing, the, the price of the house is going to grow faster. Right, the, the value of the house is going to grow faster. So mom and dad die after February 16, 2021. Andy buys out Betty and Charlie before distribution. If Andy does not live in the home, his taxes jump to 24000 a year. There's no reassessment exclusion. This is because Prop 19 guts Prop 58 and Prop 58 was a parent to child reassessment exclusion. Trisha asks, this all has to do with property taxes and not step up in basis, correct? Yes, this is all, this is just property taxes, all right? Just, we're, we're not talking about step up in basis. Uh, basically when mom and dad die or when mom and then dad die, there's an adjusted cost basis. So if mom paid, mom and dad paid 15 or paid a uh, hundred thousand for the property, uh, 50,000 for the property, and now it's worth 2 million, mom and dad die, the kids can sell that property and not pay capital gains tax uh, if they sell it for 2 million. So Prop 13, now this is important, residential rentals, reassessed at death, commercial, industrial, family vacation homes, everything gets reassessed at death. Very important for you to understand uh, the world, the property tax world is changing on February 16 of 2021. So your parents can gift their Prop 13 tax base. How do you do this? Well, property is reassessed when there's a change in ownership. That's Revenue and Taxation Code Section 60. The parents can transfer a primary, right now a primary home of any value 
while, li while living to their children. There's no reassessment. The parents can tra also transfer while they're alive. They don't have to wait till they die. They can transfer while they're alive a million dollars each or two million per parent. Whether you have one kid or 10 kids, it's still a million, two million. And, but you got to act before February 16, 2021. So what can mom and dad do now? Well, we're working on a Proposition 13 trust, and there are different variations of this trust. This allows passing a Prop 13 to the children now. It preserves Prop 13 for, for the children for their entire lifetime because Prop 13 is still around, okay? If you transfer a property to your kids, they're going to enjoy Prop 13 for their whole life. Um, you got to deed the property to the trust before February 16th. The parent is the grantor and the children are the beneficiaries. Change in ownership occurs. Whether there's an adjusted cost basis at death is case specific. Some clients want it, some clients don't. Wealthier clients don't want it. Less wealthy clients do want an adjusted cost basis. There is no one size fits all. And each plan, I, I, and I'll tell you, we've been meeting with so many clients lately, uh, myself, the other attorneys in the firm, every situation is entirely different. And so it's really hard to, to generalize. I've been talking a lot of people out of transferring their home, quite frankly, because there are a lot of goodies in Prop 13. Uh, we have another webinar coming up at, I believe it's three this afternoon, where we do cover um, the goodies. Uh, there's a few other webinars that are on our YouTube page. I'd highly recommend you check out our YouTube page. Um, here it is. Um, we kind of go over a lot of these concepts. This is about a two hour webinar. We're up to, I don't know, 6,000 views. Um, so here's what you can do to save Prop 13 taxes for the kids now. Go to CunninghamLegal.com, set up a Zoom or phone consult, collect all your recent property tax bills and locate your current estate planning documents. Uh, and you need to get those to us before the meeting. The consultation fee is 500. And at the end of the meeting, you will, need, you will be able to decide, do I need to do something or not? If we do more work, obviously additional fees apply, but you can go to the website and set up an appointment. Anonymous asks, if you transfer the property to the kids, what happens to the step up in basis? The step up in basis is very important. We are uh, working on a structure where a gift can be completed, but still included in the gross estate of the grantor, which gets you an adjusted cost basis. And we're using a combination of 2038 powers, Internal Revenue Code Section 2038, which is the delaying of the uh, income to the children. And under uh, code of, uh, 26 CFR 25, 2511-2D, uh, the fact that you are withholding the distribution of income does not make the gift incomplete. We believe that you need to have a complete gift for federal estate tax in order to trigger a change in ownership under in Revenue and Taxation Code Section 60. So um, there's a lot in there that's probably more for lawyers. But I want you to know that um, this is, uh, it's a big step to do this. A lot of our clients choose to do it and a lot choose not to do it, but at least they know because this is a very, this is an extremely valuable property right for, for Californians. Anonymous asks, would the transfer, transfer would occur in Prop 13 trust? Is it irrevocable? Yes, it's an irrevocable trust. It needs to be a completed gift. It can't be a revocable gift. You can't say, I'm going to give my kids the home and keep a life estate, or I'm going to keep give my kids the home, but I'm going to keep uh, I'm going to get the income for 30 years. You, you know, you can't game it that way because that does not constitute a change in ownership. So um, I'll open it up for questions. Uh, any more questions? Um, whoops, not quite the end of the slide deck. So go to our website. I'd also encourage you to go to our YouTube page. So if you go to YouTube, CunninghamLegal.com, subscribe to our YouTube page. Uh, that is a great way to stay in touch. So there's a subscribe button. Uh, somewhere on here. Yeah, it's the lower right hand corner on the subscribe. We have a lot of really valuable content. We are pushing out a lot of Prop 19 content, a lot of different examples. We're looking at this in different ways. If you're a lawyer or other professional, we do accept referrals. Uh, we are very busy. Um, and we also co-counsel or whatever you want to do um, if you want to bring us in to um, help you out. A lot of people are doing outright transfers. Uh, I would say that is probably the the super safest way to do it. The problem is you lose control, right? You don't get a step up in basis. And there are a lot of problems that come with that. But for some people, you know, if somebody's 95 years old and going into assisted living, yeah, it might not be a bad idea. So again, this is not legal advice. I'm just, these are my thoughts. And we do have one question. So go ahead, put your questions in the Q&A. Uh, Anonymous asks for clarity, a transfer to a Prop 13 trust gets both the step up in basis and preserves Prop 13. That is uh, what we are, yes. That is correct, if that's appropriate. 
Some people don't want an adjusted cost basis at death because it is included in their taxable estate. So it depends on the value of your estate. Craig asks, if you live in the home after you inherit it, how long do I need to live there before I can rent it out to avoid reassessment? Craig, that is the $64,000 question. Nobody knows. Uh, is it a life sentence? Do you have to live there forever? I don't know. The legislature is going to convene. There will likely be a rule on it. Um, I have no idea what it is, but I can't imagine that it would be forever. Um, but it's possible. It's possible that they could say, if you stop making that uh, your home, right? If you if that homeowner's exemption drops off, the property does get reassessed. It's possible they take that away. Anonymous asks, if you add kids now to rental property on title, don't you get the step up and then only get partial reassessment? No. If you have a retained interest, if you if you add someone to title, that actually is not a change in ownership. That does not meet the test under Revenue and Taxation Code Section 60. I would encourage you to go to the internet and Google California Revenue and Taxation Code Section 60. It's about two lines. Um, it's, it's really short, but you have to meet a three-pronged test. Otherwise, there's not a change in ownership. And here's the problem. There's a whole body of law that says, this is not a change in ownership. This is not a change in ownership. This is not a change in ownership. It's like, it's like you've never seen a duck and someone shows you a picture of an elephant and they say, this is not a duck and a picture of an alligator. This isn't a duck. Well, we haven't seen a duck. So uh, I'm, I'm in, in the interest of full disclosure, I will tell you, I'm talking to some of the smartest attorneys in California I've ever talked to. We are all struggling with this because it is a rewiring of our brain. We have to come to this with the beginner's mindset and we have to kind of unlearn what we've learned and re relearn in order to um, get a transfer of property and have it be completed, but then get an adjusted cost basis. What if they put you on title with them before they die? Uh, that's not a change in ownership. It's a change in ownership when they die. And if they die after February 16, 2021, it's gonna be reassessed. Well, we're gonna put, this is gonna be recorded. It'll go up on our YouTube page. And I believe you will be getting a follow-up email so you can slow it down if, if I went through this a little too fast. Could you share more details how you can preserve the step up and basis after gifting it to the children? Yeah, so on the, what we do is we do an irrevocable trust and the parent, the grantor retains the power to, to accumulate income essentially to defer the distribution of income. That power causes inclusion in the gross estate of the grantor. So you make a completed gift, you file your 709, and then this Internal Revenue Code Section 2038 power brings the, the asset back into your taxable estate, but does not constitute an additional change in ownership. And the 252511-2D says that the mere um, control over when somebody receives something does not make the gift, the underlying gift incomplete. And so um, we believe that that meets the, um, the Revenue and Taxation Code Section 60 uh, threshold to trigger a change in ownership when the trust is created and the parent transfers the property to the trust, when that property is transferred to the trust, it's looking like, and I hate to be couch this and it's looking like because this is not definitive and we're, we're about 98% done with the research and development on this. But um, uh, when the parent dies, it, there are strings uh, that are attached that bring back the, the gift into the estate and um, get you your adjusted cost basis. I live, I live in the home caring for an elderly father. It, it is my primary residence. When he transitions, can I claim his primary residence, retain Prop 13 tax basis if my siblings agree without buyout? I, I, would ha I can't say yes. Um, I think you're going to have problems. Um, and the other open question is if there's a parent with multiple siblings, unless they leave the house to you, right? unless they change their estate plan and leave their house to you, um, you, you may get reassessed on that, on that portion. You know, if it's, if it's you and two siblings, you may get two thirds reassessed. We just don't know what the rules are gonna be. So what might be the main reasons for avoiding a step up in basis to the property? Um, yeah, so here's the, here's the issue. Right now you can leave 11,580,000 tax free to anyone you want. You can gift 11,580,000 tax free. And that's each, that's per person. Next year it's going up to 11,700,000. In 2026, regardless of what happens in, con you know, if, if no bill is passed changing it, right, that's going to drop down to 6 million in 2026. 
So some people have larger estates. They don't want those assets to be in their estate. They would rather forego the adjusted cost basis and, um, and avoid the estate tax. And remember, capital gains taxes are typically paid when the property is sold, when you have money. Estate taxes are paid when somebody dies, and that's not a sale. And so for many people who have uh, significant real estate holdings, they have to liquidate those quickly because the taxes are due nine months after death. So um, again, this is case specific, but I would encourage you to, to uh, go to our website, book an appointment. Uh, for rental properties, can mom and dad continue to receive income after gifting title? We're working on that. We've got a workaround. Um, the trust uh, can be a grantor trust and the, the parent can uh, retain the right to borrow without adequate security. And we believe that does not cause a problem for a property tax uh, reassessment when the parent dies. So the parent could borrow. On the other hand, once the property is transferred to the kids in the irrevocable trust, they can, the trustees can capitalize an LLC and the parent can potentially manage the LLC. They got to do work. Um, but if a parent's in an assisted living facility, the kids can, can ha have the income distributed to them and then pay for mom and dad's care because um, that is not considered a gift. So if you're paying medical care directly to the medical provider, uh, that's not a gift. In your irrevocable trust example that received a step up, would that also retain Prop 13 taxes, meaning off of original purchase price? So the idea is when both parents die, and it's when one parent dies, you get a half adjusted cost basis. And when the other parent dies, you get the other half, which is not as good as if the parents keep the property. Um, but um, when, when the parents are both deceased, the idea is you get an adjusted cost basis on, on those properties. And uh, which means you potentially pay less capital gains tax. But on a high level, the reason people are doing this, the reason people are doing this is because they don't want to sell the property. So how important is cost basis to you? And again, you know, if you're talking a $500,000 assessment and an $800,000 market value, eh, I'm not sure it's a big deal. But if you have a $100,000 assessment and a million dollar market value on 10 properties, as one of our client does, just 10 properties, and the tax base is a million and the market value is 10 million, those taxes would go up $100,000 a year when the kid inherits the property. That's the kind of person who's doing these, this type of a trust. What is your YouTube channel? Uh, Cunningham Legal, uh, let's see here. It's right there. Uh, if you go to YouTube and just put in Cunningham Legal, it's Cunningham Legal, the Living Trust Lawyers uh, is our YouTube channel. And let's see, uh, answer that. To the in the ABC example where trust borrowed uh, 1.3 million, so one kid gets the $2, $2 million home with the $1.33 million loan, what kind of term length for the loan would be typical? Those are gonna be short-term loans. They're, um, you pay a lot of points. Um, and when the property's distributed, typically the, um, the beneficiary who's inheriting the property, uh, Andy in this case, wants to refinance because the interest rate's too high. So they typically go out and, uh, and refinance the property. Uh, after February 16, 2021, then all rental properties will be reassessed no matter what, correct? Yes, unless it's not a change in ownership, unless original owners, but in, and for our example, yes, as a general rule, unless there's an exception, there are very few exceptions. Um, that's, that's a real issue. So um, the bottom line is Prop 19, there's a lot of good stuff in Prop 19. Again, we're covering a webinar later today and you can go ahead and register. There's, there's a few spaces left on that but we're covering all the good stuff in Prop 19. At yesterday's seminar, uh, Charitable Lead Unit Trust and Charitable Remainder Annuity Trust were discussed briefly. Is there a fuller discussion in another Cunningham Legal YouTube webinar? No, we're gonna post that webinar. We're gonna take an in-depth dive in that next year. So we're, we're kind of preoccupied with Prop 19, but we're gonna be covering those tax strategies because something you need to understand, if you're a higher net worth person, even though these laws change in 2026, January 1 of 2026, any gift made within three years of death comes back into your estate. So the real deadline, right? This is if Biden doesn't get his, his bill through to drop the exemption down to three and a half million. The real deadline is December 31 of 2022, which is only two years from now, right? And two years goes kind of quick. Uh, Carrie asks, we have a vacation home. Can mom put me on title now? And when she dies, there's no change in ownership. So no reassessment, even though I have two other siblings if my brother and sister are fine with it. Um, if she puts you on title, that is not a change in ownership. It's a change in ownership when, he die, when she dies. If she dies after February 16, the whole property is going to get reassessed. Go ahead, make an appointment. We can help you out with that. There is a strategy we can use. 
that, um, that, that can make that happen. So that's, that's part of kind of updating your mom's estate plan, but definitely you're, that's the kind of, um, that's the kind of person situation that we're meeting with quite a bit. If I currently own a rental property in California and continue to hold it during my lifetime, does prop 19 trigger a reassessment? No, you are protected by prop 13. By the way, if the kids sell everything, if they're going to sell everything, it doesn't even make sense to do any of this planning, right? It's only if the kids are going to hold it after you're gone. Eric asks, only one parent is alive. The house purchase price was 300,000 is now worth 2 million. I don't want to sell it, but receiving step up in basis is important. Will Prop 13 trust accomplish both the step up in basis to the 2 million to avoid capital gains tax for the eventual sale years down the road and preserve Prop 13 taxes? Yes. What if you survive your kids? <laughs> Does Prop 13 trust pass back to parents? Uh, that is people dying out of order. So here's one of the risks. And this is a very important risk. One of the risks is that you, um, that your children die before you do, then your property gets reassessed. So what we're doing once these transfers are complete on a separate engagement, we are taking those individual bits that have been transferred to the kids and we're putting those in an LLC. And the reason is if less than 50% of an LLC interest transfers, then the property is not reassessed. So there is a workaround, it's down the road. We don't know what the rules are, but we know what to do now to make sure that you're teed up so that you can take advantage of future rules. So again, go to our YouTube page, um, subscribe to our YouTube page. It's a great way to get the feed of our videos. We're doing uh, a few a week, and these are very topical videos of stuff that's that's really happening now. Um, so. Also go to Cunningham Legal to set up a Zoom or phone consult and you got to collect all your property tax bills. This is your recent property tax bill, the 20, 2020, 2021. And um, you can scan those or even take a picture of them and text or email it to us. But we need, we need that tax bill, your, your, entire, your complete estate plan and your finances, your assets. So whether it's a, a questionnaire that you fill out or if you have a personal balance sheet, uh, it just depends. Uh, consultation fees, 500. And at the end of the meeting, at the end of the meeting, you will, you will know, hey, should I take another step or not? Uh, could Prop 19 be rescinded? You know what? Um, absolutely. By a, a vote of the people, they can amend the Constitution. And here's what I'm thinking may happen. Uh, I hate to predict. Here's, here's what I think may happen. I think you're going to have passage of, a, of a, 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 an initiative that reassesses commercial and industrial property for at least for publicly traded companies, but maybe everyone. And what they're going to do is they're going to bring back the parent to child reassessment exclusion. I think that's, that may be the bootstrapping way they're going to do it. So I don't know. Who knows? Sounds like you need uh, granular info on the property tax bill beyond the simple dollar amount of the property. Yes, we need the granular information. It's like line item by line item because we need to know if you're claiming your homeowner's exemption, we need to know to really to the dollar what the assessed value is, because it's not the tax, the taxes that you pay, it's really your assessed value, because every county is different. Some counties charge 1.1%, some counties charge 1.25%. So we, it just depends on what county you're in, and then what, you know, college district you're in and all this, all this other stuff. So with that, uh, we do have another webinar this afternoon, and we're going to go into all the good stuff on Prop 19. And if you're watching this recording, it's probably already going to be up on our website. Um, so uh, it was a pleasure spending time with you. And Mike, thank you for your uh, comment. Very informative. Thanks. Uh, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube page. And hopefully COVID will be over soon. Uh, hang in there and uh, stay safe and have a great day.